Welcome back to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and I have two guests today, uh, Hikma and Rob from the Unitarian Fellowship and the Thunder Bay Mosque. Help me again, what's the other word for mosque? The Arabic Hikma? word for mosque is masjid. Masjid. Yeah. All right. And, and that's actually the name on the building, yeah. isn't it? Thunder Bay Masjid. I was mentioning, I've driven by and I went, what does that name mean? I don't <laughs> know. So in a way... The Arabic actually means a, a place where you prostrate. So that's the Arabic word. The Arabic word for that is masjid. Okay. And, and, that's, and, that's and, the term. and prostate is like prayer. Yeah. So when you go on the floor and you, and, and you put your face down on the floor. Yeah. Great. I mean, I, I have so much I don't know and I'm so glad you're here. You're going to have a coffee after. To kind of fill me in a little bit <laughs> yeah. on this stuff. And I think I'm probably similar to other folks watching the show. So this is, this is great to learn more. Thanks. So you're uh, a traveler. You've got a family in, in Toronto and you come to Thunder Bay. So actually, I, I was living in Thunder Bay uh, for two years straight. So I, I, was, I was here. Okay. And then just this last year, uh, I, I, like I mentioned before, that I was studying online and th those online studies kind of finished and I had to kind of actually be there uh, for my lessons. So um, this last year, I think starting in June, last June, I started um, traveling back and forth. So I spend most of my week in Toronto, where I do have family. And um, I come here on Thursdays, Fridays, and I leave on Saturdays. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and how does uh, the kind of the normal religious practice happen um, at the mosque? So even if I'm not there, the, we have five prayers a day in congregation. Um, so the mosque is open at least five times a day for that. And then on Fridays, we have a sermon, uh, which I deliver around 2 o'clock. And then also um, we have classes throughout the week for students. So people who go to school, they'll come in the evening, learn Arabic, learn um, the Quran, learn Islamic studies, etc. So and, and when you say there's prayers five times a day, now I don't attend a regular church or anything myself. I, I know in some, uh, they have a service like every morning, early in the morning, where there yeah. is a certain kind of flow. Is, is there someone that leads the prayers yes. or so are people kind of independent there? So, I, so those, those five prayers in the mosque are in congregation. So that's, that's optional. So if, so if a Muslim can make it to the mosque, he can, he'll make it to the mosque and pray in congregation. If he, if he can't, and he can have a congregation at home, he prays at home. And if he can't, then he can pray, in, pray individually. And each prayer is about 10 minutes long. So each prayer is about an average of 10 minutes long. Yeah. And does someone vocalize the prayer? Yeah, uh, three, um, three, three of the prayers are vocalized. Two of them are silent. Okay. Uh, of the five. And, and so in a way, you know, in my little world, I learned the Lord's Prayer, that we learned we have to pray with that. We have something very similar to that. Uh, we have Surah Fatiha, which is the opener. It's the first chapter of the Quran. And every unit of prayer that a Muslim prays, uh, so every prayer is an average. Some, some, some are two units, three units, or four units. And every unit, um, they would have to say the opening prayer, which is, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Al-Din, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim, Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wa Al-Dalleen. Ameen. I can translate it, but that's the extent of the, uh, of the prayer. And what language is that? That is Arabic. That's Arabic. Yeah. And is Arabic, I mean, uh, in Islam or, or the Muslim, there's a lot of different countries with different, um, yeah. you know, so different languages so, so and cultures, but do they all share that same Arabic? Not all of them. For example, my parents are from Afghanistan. I was born in Pakistan. My parents are from Afghanistan. Uh, we speak Pashto at home. So I actually had to learn Arabic. I, I, don't, I didn't speak Arabic at home. Um, so, but but um, many of the... Many Muslims, even if they don't understand the Arabic or can't speak Arabic, they would be able to say the prayer in Arabic. And most of them, especially um, like the opening prayer and prayers like that, they would know the translation of. So it's kind of like in the Catholic Church, you may not speak Latin, but the prayers might have been in Latin, yeah. and that's yes. the way it worked. Yes. Right. So the lecture you're going to be giving... Um, I forget the title, but it's about personal responsibility in, in times time of, of kind of public, public chaos. Yeah. So, 
how do you see that? What, what do you talk about personal responsibility? Um, well, you've got to come to the lecture for that. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, well, the lecture is really based upon um, uh, my, uh, as, as Michael put it in, in the paper, my take on the world. Um, it has to do with, um, well, the, the talk will, will revolve around first me kind of deconstructing the title itself, personal responsibility in a time of public chaos. Are we living in a time of public chaos? So that's, that's the first question. Mm -hmm. The second question would be, are we personally responsible? And if yes, we are personally responsible, uh, why are we personally responsible? And then I'll, I'll go into how we are personally responsible. And then finally, I'll conclude with um, uh, how does public chaos and in inverted commas, if we uh, affirm that public chaos does exist, uh, consume uh, personal responsibility? So when you say public chaos, the first thing that pops into my mind is how life has changed in my own lifetime. You know, with the technology that's changed and, you know, I get 50 emails a day. Like, like leave me alone, all right? For crying out loud. I mean, I don't really say that because yeah. I see that my role is a communicator, but it has put way more pressure on me to kind of keep track of all this stuff and, and interact with people. Is that, is that part of what you're thinking about in terms of that, that public chaos? Um, part of it's, a lot of it has to do with uh, the social chaos or the political chaos that many of us um, are aware of. Um, whether we like it or not, we're aware of some type of social chaos, especially with the, with the new mediums of, of media that we have, like you said, technology and, and, and alerts and, and tweets and shares and, uh, and the news feed just feeds us every single day. So I, part of it is that, that idea of perhaps because of technology that we have, we're fed more news, which can sometimes be harmful for us because uh, it's not healthy to be force fed things which uh, in, in times before, like you said, we, we wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have access to. We're out of time for this segment. Please stay with us. We'll be right back and we'll explore a little bit more about uh, public chaos.